Rock a thigh how rock a thigh how shah rock a thigh how rock a thigh how shah all praise to how by Hashem you have a shah by Hashem we call Kadash you have been the name of the Heavenly Father you have a shah been the name of his only begotten son who they eagerly call Jesus Christ now you're going to uh, this great city that's talked about in Revelation it really exposes what's going on with these religions and these philosophies that the red dragon came up with um, and deceived the whole world with because this thing is very specific and we're seeing it on a high level uh, especially with the month that just passed now, real quick, I'm going to go into the scriptures and show how the Lord have indignation for this uh, activity. And this is why he burnt Sodom and Gomorrah with brimstone and fire. Now, when you're going to, let's get Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah... He talks about this Sodom and Gomorrah situation and how he did it was he showed you what nation would be presenting this to the world. Getting right to the point, he says in verse 17, say also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighboring cities thereof, says the Lord, no man shall pass abide there. Shall, no man shall abide there, neither shall the Son of Man dwell there. Now this is a great, great, great scripture because it's showing you who is going to be controlling this great city that's spiritually Egypt. And what was the great city called in Revelation? See, the great city, let's go ahead and get that real quick. What was it called? 17, and I think the fifth verse. It says, and upon her forehead was, was, was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So, this great city was called Babylon the Great. Now we're going back to Jeremiah 49 and um, verse 18. It's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, but it's naming who uh, is going to be overthrown by Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed. So you go to the next chapter, it says the word of the Lord spake against Babylon and, the land, and against the land of the Chaldeans. So now, when you go down, what does it say about this Babylon? It quotes the same verse that was quoted with Edom. It says, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities, says the Lord, so shall no man buy, abide there neither shall any son of man dwell therein. So this Babylon is Edom. The Edomites is going to be uh, ruling this Babylon. Okay. And so then we can go to 51. And 51 talks about what this Babylon would be doing. This uh, verse 25, it says, Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, says the Lord, which destroy all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the rocks and will make you a burnt mountain. Now, this destroying mountain is going back to Mount Seir and the Edomites connecting it again to Edom. Uh, what is it? Ezekiel 35 and 2. 
2 and 3. It says, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it and say unto it, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against you, and I will stretch out my hand against you and make you most desolate. So it's showing how Edom is this mountain, this great mountain that's destroying the whole earth. Just like um, Revelation said, this great city that was um, spiritually Sodom would be destroying the whole earth in that same chapter 11. Let's go get that. That same chapter 11 is talking about that great city. In verse 18, what does it say? It says, And the nations were angry, and, and your wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shalt give reward, giveth a reward unto the servants of prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear your name, small and great, and shall destroy them which destroy the earth. See? And it's talking about that great city. When you go back up to verse 13, what was going to be destroyed? Who was destroying the earth? It says, in the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. So it's going to be a major earthquake. What's that earthquake going to be doing? It's going to be destroying this great city, and, and it's going to be destroying it with fire like a... Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, when you go into um, Revelation 17 and 16, it tells you what the, how this great city was going to be destroyed. And it says, And the woman which thou saw is that great city. So it's, this is talking about the great city. Verse 16, it says, And ten horns that you saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Talking about the woman that was on the great and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Okay. So it's going to burn this place with fire. Okay. Now, um, Revelation talks about this fornication. It says, And all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Okay. Let me see if it says anything about Sodom and Gomorrah here in Revelation 18. Okay, so when you go to the fornication of Esau, Hebrews 12 and 16, it says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. So Esau was a major fornicator. See? And this is what he he's doing in uh, Babylon the Great. Look at Job 30, verse 1. It says, But now they are but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to sit with the dogs of my flock because they practice bestiality and they do that's why they got the rainbow flag and having rainbow month pride month because they are major fornicators you can't even leave them with the dogs look at first uh first samuel 15 talking about the, the grandson of esau Amalek, who was a small hatter over there in that land, and they have pride parades all over the place. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came from came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, and slay both man and woman, infant and suckling. Ox and sheep, camel and ass. So he wanted to destroy the animals because these people was practicing bestiality. They're the type of people that'll go down there 
and mess with the animal. And so Paul Saul got punished for not destroying what? It said verse nine, but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs. See, he didn't destroy the animals who was supposed to be destroyed. When, when you go into the bestiality, you're supposed to destroy that person and the darn animal because they don't sit around and mess with that animal. And so this is one of the main reasons why you got in two states in, in Babylon the Great that they don't uh, have laws against bestiality. And they probably ain't, and they mainly ain't going to enforce none of the laws anyway in the other states that do got it because they are a bunch of fornicators. But this Babylon the Great in this great city, um, what I want to get, he had in Jeremiah, I mean, Ezekiel, um, let's go ahead and get Malachi 1 and 4. <laughs> It says, whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. So they fell when they were the Roman Edomites. And so they was going to return and build the desolate places, meaning they was going to build up their kingdom again. And this is what happened in 1492. With the Renaissance, they was reborn, rebirth, and so they, was, so they can rebuild. Say, so thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. This is how he's going to throw down the Edomites by the strong Babylon the great, which is spiritually Sodom. And they shall call them, meaning all the Edomites, the border of wickedness and the people against who the Lord have indignation forever. See, because they bringing in the... Uh, pushing this philosophy of Christianity and um, saying that it's lawful to be a sodomite in 2015 and 2008 they would use Obama to usher this thing in and he made it worldwide not all the nation is practicing this mess of uh, sodomy and he will punish you if you don't get on his side. So that shows that America is the one pushing this influence, this wine of wickedness on the people worldwide. Okay, let me end with this one and have a coup. Have a coup starting at two and four. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. See, he's a fornicator. He is a, 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 a alphabet person. He like to deal with, with fornication. Verse 5, he also, because he transgressed by wine. See, the wine he going to give to all nations is this uh, sodomy mess. He is a man, he is a proud man. See, that go to pride month. Neither keep it, keep it at home who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied. See, they're not satisfied with, with just dealing with women. It says, but gather unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. He, he pushing that stuff worldwide. And so this is why Mystery Babylon is easy to be identified because we know it's on the one nation that's pushing this the most. See, it's clearly documented that America is the one pushing it. They the great city that's doing this. Okay, and when you go to Revelation 18, it tells you that um, also this nation would be having slaves in. Look at verse 10. Uh, Revelation 18 
and 13 it says at the end of 13 it says slaves and souls of men see the descendants of slaves still is in this land still is in this great city making them rich and everybody getting rich off of these slaves and so we know this this place is certified America uh, written in the scriptures, Babylon the Great, Basra, the land of the Edomites. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Kakadash, double honors to the elders, pushing the truth, peace of the elect worldwide, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, descendants of slaves scattered around the globe on slave ships and through many captivities. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.